Johnny Gray is an engineer in the American South in 1861. He loves his engine, the General, and his girlfriend, Annabelle. She wants him to enlist in the Army. But they won't take him, because he's more useful as an engineer. Annabelle thinks he's lying about the whole thing, so she snubs him. A year later, Union raiders steal Johnny's train, and Annabelle is captured. Johnny chases them on foot, by handcar, a bicycle, and finally, another locomotive. The raiders sabotage the tracks, cutting telegraph wires, tearing up a rail, obstructing the tracks, and even leaving a burning car in a bridge. Despite these obstacles, Johnny pursues them into enemy territory. When the raiders realize only one man is chasing them, they stop to fight. Johnny abandons the chase. Behind enemy lines, Johnny inadvertently overhears plans for a surprise attack. He locates and rescues Annabelle. The next day, they find the general in a Union encampment. Johnny smuggles Annabelle aboard and steals back the general. They're chased by northerners and successfully stall them by destroying the track. They return home in time to warn the Confederates of the coming attack. The northern army arrives to find the south ready to meet them. They wage battle, and the south is victorious. Later, Johnny is enlisted as a lieutenant. He finally has his uniform, his girl, and his engine back. This film was inspired by real events that took place on April 12, 1862. There really was a Union raid on the Western and Atlantic Railroad, led by a spy called James Andrews. And during wartime in the South, engineers were not allowed to enlist in the Army. The general arrived at Big Shanty early in the morning. Johnny's character was based on William Fuller, the conductor, who got off to wash the oil from his hands before breakfast. Meanwhile, the raiders undid the coupling behind the third boxcar, not the second, as shown. Interestingly, some of the gags presented in Keaton's film were taken straight from real life. Fuller and two others took off after the stolen locomotive on foot. Fuller later commented, this seemed to be funny to some of the crowds standing around the hotel there, but it wasn't so to me. It's easy to imagine this statement coming from any of Keaton's movie characters, who encounter absurd situations with unfailing seriousness. Anyway, Andrew's raiders clipped the telegraph lines, and once, dragged them down. According to one raider, the way we yanked down the telegraph poles and tore the wire loose when we started up was frightful to behold. The raiders tore a rail loose, though they'd brought no tools for the job. Meanwhile, Fuller and four other men were now pursuing them by handcar, though in 1862, handcars would have been pushed along by poles. On we pressed and pushed, Fuller said, every now and then being thrown in a ditch by the absence of a rail taken up by the raiders. The raiders repeatedly dropped cross ties, but these were ineffective. Fuller and the others finally boarded a locomotive called the Yona and later switched to the Texas, a locomotive equal to the General in almost every way. Unable to turn around, the Texas ran backwards while pursuing the General, unlike events in the movie. Despite the risks to his engine and himself, engineer Peter Bracken pushed the Texas to its limit, up to 60 miles per hour. The Raiders released boxcars, one at a time. The Texas simply coupled to the cars, and no harm was done, inspiring this scene. At this time, 20 armed Union soldiers were running from seven civilians, armed only with a couple shotguns. Andrews naturally assumed that they were outnumbered, and again, one of Keaton's gags was taken straight from real life. In the movie, the raiders leave a burning car in a covered bridge. Though this was the real raiders' intention, they never succeeded at bridge burning. Hurried on by the speeding Texas, the Andrews Raiders ran out of fuel after burning every last splinter they could salvage, as reflected here. They abandoned the general, 
and took to the woods. Before the screenplay was written, Clyde Bruckman and Buster Keaton consulted a book written by one of the raiders, William Pittenger. Similarities between the book's account and the film are readily apparent. Just like the real chase, the film was full of dangerous stunts. Perhaps the most dangerous was this one, where Johnny sits oblivious on a coupling rod as the locomotive starts to move. It doesn't look that bad, but if the wheels had spun, like they do here, and here, Keaton would have been seriously injured. One reviewer observed that Mr. Keaton still preserves his inscrutable expression. He looks like a clergyman and acts like a vaudeville tumbler. Though Keaton's title of the Great Stoneface was well won, he does make a variety of expressions. Confusion, excitement, exertion, and frustration are all there. The only thing missing is happiness. And though Keaton's biggest falls are met with indifference, the little things get more of a reaction. The general was shot on location in Cottage Grove, Oregon. The Oregon National Guard pitched in to play the armies. And this famous scene is said to be the most expensive in silent film history. Though the film wasn't well received in its day, perhaps the humor was too dark, it's now considered to be one of America's greatest films.